All point of views expressed on Shop Talk 360 are solely the point of views of the individuals and do not represent any company, organization, or group. Shop Talk 360, the industry's dedicated platform for commercial design, construction, and facilities. With more than 25 years building for national retail brands, an award-winning and best-selling author, keynote speaker, industry coach, and event producer, here's our host of Shop Talk 360, Grace Davis. Hey, Shop Talkers. Um, we have our very special guest, Jessica Suarez, Senior Manager of Design at Cinnabon. Jessica, thank you for joining us. Thanks so much, Grace, for having me. I'm so excited to be here again. Uh, now, as you know, as we chatted, this is the holiday theme speed round show. So uh, <laughs> with that, very excited to hear what's been going on with you. Uh, first question, what projects are you glad to be wrapping up for this year? Oh, man. Well, we just had our final opening of this year um, last week, so I'm super glad that all our 2016 openings are done and complete. But one of my biggest projects I've been working on all year is out of um, this mall in L.A. called Century City. It's a one of Westfield's mm-hmm. uh, most prestigious malls, and they have, like, um, I think, like, 10 of them worldwide or so. So, it's been a huge project, and we're going to be out of permitting in January. So very excited to see that one come to fruition, and now it's kind of off my plate and in my construction manager's hands. <laughs> so um, very, very can't wait cool. to see how that happens. Yeah, yeah. Now, how many locations is that in total so far for Cinnabon? Um, I think we have like 300 something I don't with it's a little hard to say exactly because we have um, a large number of Cinnabons in our travel and entertainment locations so a lot of pilot gas stations and mm-hmm. um, we also have opening in Schlotsky's now so um, mm-hmm. those count towards our opening numbers but I, but I think about mall locations we have about 300 give or take okay well Cinnabon is always a favorite of our families, especially you can smell it as you're approaching a Cinnabon, and my <laughs> mouth is watering already just thinking about it. Okay. Oh, um, yeah. Now, what industry trends are you noticing for the first quarter in the new year? Oh, that is a tough question. Um, I guess, like, it's more in the marketing I see is – is changing a lot for for brands you know it's how brands are marketing themselves you know we went from being a like transparent culture with like chip chipotle chipotle excuse me chipotle um mm-hmm. talking about their like you know like kind of like farm table ish process you know so i think it's a lot mm-hmm. of the marketing elements like for us we're going to be you know changing like a little bit of how we do our photography for our stores and marketing more on our story and our story is life needs frosting and that is kind of like what Cinnabon um, keeps in their heart. That's what we, like, want people to feel when they come to our store. So I think we're going to see a lot of trends changing with how people market towards people. You know, there's a big shift in, um, you know, in our culture of a, like, kind of, like, high, like, ADD culture where people just, like, you have to, like, do something kind of loud to get people's attention. You know, you see, like, the crow knots, you know, or whatever they are called in New York popping up, you know, and I'm hoping, like, maybe mm-hmm. Cinnabon will have something that, like, hey, look, you know, they did something crazy. Like, what's their, like, secret menu kind of thing? So, um, so you'll, I think you'll see a, a shift in how we market to people since, um, you know, since there's a lot of mobile marketing coming out and social marketing mm-hmm. being more prominent than um, just having food photography in our stores. Okay, very cool. Um, okay, now here's a question for you. What's the top item on your New Year's resolution? Oh, man. Um, I think I want to, like, say, like, try to try new foods. I've been trying to do that, but, um, you know, so I want to push myself some more So we're and, and travel more. So we're actually going to uh, Spain this year oh, in nice. May, so I'm hoping to nice. – like push myself out of my boundaries, you know, and uh, like try something new while I'm there. Maybe like try 
try a different type of entree or, you know, food that I would normally not try. Very, very cool. I like that. Travel and food is always one of my top, um, one of my top, uh, uh, bucket list items. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Now, if you, if you could give a special gift to our industry for the holidays, what would it be and why? Hmm. Um, all the puppies in the world. I'm kidding. Um, I know. I love puppies. Especially the puppy puppies. <laughs> Yeah, who doesn't want to be sitting there working on their computer with a puppy in their lap? I mean, it just makes so much sense. Um, I think if I could give a special gift to our industry for the holidays, it would be, you know, inspiration, I guess, would be, like, what I would Mm -hmm. hope to give. Um, You know, I'd like to... Like with my actions, hope to inspire other designers either to create creative spaces or to do something good for someone else. So like a kind of like a pay it forward experience. You know, I'd love to be able to like have a pay it forward. Like, hey, like let me teach you what I learned, and then like they teach someone else, and just kind of spread the the love in our industry a little bit. Oh, I love that approach. That's deep. I think the industry will welcome that too, by the way. I, I, I love that. Um, very, very cool. We'll have to, you know what, Jessica? We should speak offline. We should work on that project together and just like I roll love on. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah, kind of pay it forward and, and teach someone something. Yeah, it's very yeah. cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, and lastly, uh, please feel free to give a shout out for the holidays to someone special in your life. Um, well, of course, I recently got married, so, you know, if you listen to this, <laughs> this podcast, I would love to say, hey, Kevin, he, he is my husband, and he's also in the industry, he's an architect, so um, he works super hard, so I'm you know, very happy to, and grateful to have him in my life, and then, of course, Aww. of all the people that have been super supportive to me, um, and um, two particular people who I've worked with at Cinnabon is Kristen Hartman and Kat Cole. Both of them have been huge influencers and great female leadership and have always been supportive of me and always have put me in opportunities to, you know, try to push the Cinnabon brand bigger and globally. So, uh, you know, I wanted to say, like, I really appreciated that. And it's always been such a such a pleasure to work with those two. So. That's very cool. And it sounded like they are already on that inspiration, pay it forward, because they paid it forward. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very, very cool. I love that. Okay. All right. Well, um, and this concludes our holiday uh, Shop Talk 360 Speed Brow Show. So um, really looking forward to catching up with you next year to see what's going on. Absolutely. And uh, uh, hopefully uh, interviewing again real soon or seeing you at a future event. Yes, absolutely, and have a great holiday. Okay, Happy New Year to you, too. Okay. Hey, Shop Talkers, welcome to our Holiday Speed Round Show, here with my very dear friend, Joe Fairley, with National Pavement. Joe, how are you? Hello, Grace. Oh, I, I hope you can hear me well through this call. I'm out today delivering holiday gifts to um, businesses, uh, that support us. Oh, that's wonderful. Holiday cheer is always a lot of fun. That is so awesome. Um, thanks for making time to chat with us for this holiday speed round. I hear you fine. Uh, very, very cool. Okay. Um, first question to you. What project or projects are you glad to be wrapping up for this year? Oh, wow. Uh, actually, that's a pretty easy question. Um, it is a technology project. I've been working uh, with our operations teams on um, updating their systems, but more importantly, doing it via an app. And Mm. uh, that has uh, been a labor of love to make sure that everyone's wishes uh, in what could be in an app is actually put into an app. Very cool. Um, Yeah, that's that's so important. Then this way everyone's mobile and on the go. Absolutely. Um, so you're, wrap, you're, you're getting ready to wrap that up. We are. We are. We're getting ready to wrap it up and certainly um, display it and, and share it with our, with our clients and our partners 
uh, at the trade show season, which is upon us here and starts in a couple weeks. Yes, it does. Okay. Now, um, Joe, next question. What industry trends are you noticing for the first quarter in the new year? Well, actually, there are two that I can think of off the top of my head. One is that everybody has an app. (laughs) So, um, you know, what I'm doing is, is nothing more sometimes than keeping up with a latest trend. Uh, some mm-hmm. are uh, using apps to improve operations. Uh, some are actually marketing and selling their app to others, even though it was designed to just do business within their own company. Some are actually mm-hmm. keeping it out. Um, but basically, to one of your points you just made, all information today is mobile, and everyone wants the information now. So that is kind of the first trend that I see just absolutely exploding here in the first quarter. Uh, very, the very other, mm-hmm. the sorry, other sorry. is, the other is very much uh, far away from kind of the technology idea. It is that the M and A world has come alive. Mergers and acquisitions, um, they mm-hmm. are on the rise again. I, the improving mm-hmm. economy, uh, money is moving from cash reserves out to investments. Uh, we're seeing a lot more activity, uh, partners getting together, mergers, acquisitions. That, that whole M&A world is just uh, going to explode in 17. Okay. Well, thank you for your thoughts on that. Very cool. Now, um, what's the top item on your New Year's resolution? For me, I believe I, I kind of chant it to my teams every day. It's, it's stay the long-term course meaning mm. that I want my my teams and my people to support strong client relationships, invest in our future, invest in the client's future. The clients will feel it, they will appreciate it, and they will reward us for it. And that's staying the long term and not being any type of having any part of our operational focus be short term. Uh, I don't mm. believe that that's in the best interest of our clients. It doesn't usually serve us well. So I want all of our teams to really focus on staying the long-term course. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that, that's, you, you bring up a very good point, you know, staying the long-term course and just fostering those partnerships and those relationships. I mean, I think, I think back how long I've known you, Joe. I've known you for, <laughs> I, I think since, since Shop Talk 360. 60, and maybe even before that. So, and you've always been a huge advocate and supporter of Shop Talk 360, and that sure means a lot to me. So, thank you for that. Well, you um, are all about the relationships, and yes. that's that's really what the industry hopefully should be based on. Very cool. Thank you, Joe. Okay, now this is one of my favorite questions. Um, if you could give a special gift to our industry for the holidays, what would it be, and why? All right, you know sometimes that I I take us off track a little bit, so I hope this isn't too far off track. No, I love it. Bring it. I would would give everyone a boxed set of all ten seasons of Friends. Aw, you of course. And the reason, (laughs) but my Mm -hmm. my reasoning behind that is some folks need training on how to just get along. Oh yeah, sure. You know, and um. Kind of my the mantra here. Um, after all, uh, the name of my favorite Christmas movie. It's a Wonderful Life. So mm. if you can't if you can't make those relationships, if you can't develop those friendships, what are you doing? Why are you in it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's very very powerful. That's so deep, and I love you for sharing that with us, Joe. Thank you. Um, but I love that. So uh, the whole a uh, box season, the whole se- all seasons, or just one season, any season in particular? No, you know what? Some people need to watch them all. Some people <laughs> just need to have some fun, understand what friendships are, the ups yeah. and the downs, and you know, it's almost like go back to training people. Sure, sure, absolutely. And you know what? Because you know, at the end of the day, we're all in this together. Absolutely. Okay. Now, lastly, uh, please feel free to give a shout-out for the holiday to someone special. 
Well, um, next week on New Year's Eve, I will celebrate my 25th wedding anniversary. So for me, uh, this month and these okay. weeks are really all about my wife, Amy, and the mm-hmm. fact that after 25 years, I have that love and support and um, just a, a wonderful family, an extended family, um, and I have um, been blessed. That is awesome. Well, happy anniversary to you in advance, and I love the fact that the whole world's going to be celebrating with you and Amy on your 25th year anniversary. So happy anniversary. Thank you very much, Grace. I really appreciate it. Thank you, and I look forward to chatting with you more in the new year and, uh, sh- and having you share some projects you get going on. All right. I'm on to drop off my next Christmas gift. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Have a great New Year's. All right, great. Thank you. Take care. Hey, Shop Talkers. Welcome to our Speed Round Holiday Show. Very stoked to have our guest, Diedrich Kirkham of John Varvatos. Hey, Diedrich, how are you? Hi, Grace. I'm good. How are you? I'm too well, thank you. Um, so this is the holiday theme, and uh, first question to you. What project or projects are you glad to be wrapping up for this year? Uh, well, there's the build-out of the store down at the World Trade Center. That's <laughs> That's over. I think everybody's mm. uh, happy that that's done. Mm-hmm. And um, there's a, another project that I'm working on right now, but it's not over yet. It's going to fall over into the new year. It's about it's a new archiving project, so and that can be a pain when you're working in this uh, field in retail, anyway. <laughs> so sure, absolutely. That 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 I wish I could say is over, <laughs> but it's not yet. But we're so coming just- too close. Got it, got it. When you say archiving, that's archiving. Um, is it assets? Is it finishes? Assets, is it correct. Assets, wow. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, now second question. What industry trends are you noticing for the first quarter in the new year? Industry trends am I noticing? Hmm. That's a, that's a really good question, but I, I, it's hard for me to tell. Uh that are going to compete for the first quarter anyway. I mean, I see a lot of a lot more stores being built for the first quarter. I mm-hmm. get that much. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Most most companies are are shooting for uh, one to three stores within the next quarter. But if you have your big budget companies, they're shooting for five to fifteen stores within the first quarter. Sure, coming out gangbusters. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, I, I, and um, I'm noticing a trend, and actually, I reached out. Uh, I reached out to you for help too. I'm noticing a trend, um, and this is a common trend, and this was discussed in past topics as well too at uh, at various conferences, with um, with the lack of or the shortage of skilled tradespeople out in the field. Yeah, but I, you know, I again, I, I don't want to. Take away what you're saying, but I actually noticed that in every quarter. <laughs> yeah, yes. Oh, no, 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 yeah, absolutely. Every you know? quarter. You're right. It's, it's been an ongoing issue, and it's just yeah, it's ongoing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's like, yeah. you know, it's like for a person of my stature, I guess, for what I do, I have to rely a lot more on my personality and getting to know people and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, networking. And that's mm-hmm. the best way to cover your bases. Uh, like going to any of these events, they help tremendously. Any mm-hmm. of the events that you sponsor, any of the events that David Corson sponsors, it, it helps tremendously in our field. And uh, uh, even if I, I deal with a vendor that I may meet at any of these events, uh, that they, and let's just say that they can't assist me with something, they mm-hmm. usually know someone that can. Yeah. So, you know. I, and I've come across that quite often this past year. So yep. uh, for for certain areas, you don't want to use a national organization. For cer- certain things, you want to use mom and pop shops uh, mm-hmm. that are local because certain things need uh, immediate attention at all times, and you'd rather have that mom and pop that, that are there all the time. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to that being like 
a trend for the first quarter, I have to just say, you know, it's a it's an ongoing effect for me. It is. It okay, certainly yeah. is. And by the way, thank you for that very kind shout out. David Corson, a very dear colleague and friend of mine, we try to partner up and support each other, whether it's for my shop talk, three sixty goals, or whether for his uh commercial construction renovation summits or conference. And by the way, I'm stoked to be seeing you in a few weeks, right? Oh yeah, in a couple of weeks, yeah. Uh That's David's right? conferences are all always fun. Always yeah. informative. He's a good guy too. Yeah, he is. He's he's someone that's been in the industry a very long time and has a genuine care for this industry. Um, okay, next question. What's the top item on your New Year's resolution? Uh getting a lot more organized than I've been in the past. <laughs> I think that I think we could all say that. Yeah, because you know, you handle so many different things and if you're ripping and running you can kinda of lose track of how you're uh, sourcing out for certain things and and you've got you know numbers and paperwork everywhere you can you yeah you, know, you think you're neat because you have it in a phone or on a tablet it's still unorganized so I like to mm. get everything a lot more you know organized so that I know where to go when to go how to go and what time to go mhm mhm okay next question if you could give a special gift to the industry for the holidays what would it be and why? Really? Yes. A special gift to the industry for the holidays. Hmm. I would have to say, clone myself. Well, there <laughs> you go. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, I would have to say, I don't know, uh, a special gift for the industry. Uh I would have to say that uh, everyone within our industry, we need to come together a lot more so that we can help each other because we can't do it all. Even though we think we can, we can't. Mm. So mm-hmm. it's always good to, to know uh, someone in any kind of field that's related to what we do and mm-hmm. stay in touch. Mm-hmm. I love it. That would, be, so, that would be something good. So it's kind of I like a networking gift. Yes. I would call it a networking gift because that's – a lot of people feel like, you know, I said it before, like the the conferences, a lot of people feel like they don't have time. I say make the time because those Mm -hmm. are things that that you can benefit in the long run for what you do in your profession. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because people people don't realize it. I actually feel that way. I feel strongly about it. Now that's just, that's so important, and so many folks that I coach, you know, um, I think it's it, it seems to be indicative of so many great individuals in this industry where everyone just is so focused on driving the business for their company, and that's great. But what happens is along the way they're not growing themselves. There's no um, pursued self development. There's they they're not networking for their own. Um, to, to expand their own networks and learning. So, uh, no, I'm all about it's so important to continue to network, as you mentioned, and continue to learn and learn from each other. And the only way to do that is to get out there and meet with folks face-to-face, um, whether it's at a conference, an event, or an organization, uh, but really make the time to do that. And uh, I wish more folks would do that. Okay. Um Mm-hmm. Now, lastly, please feel free to give a shout out for the holidays to someone special in your life. I'd like to give a shout out to my family. I'd like to give Aww. a shout out to Grace Daly and her oh, uh, and her helpfulness. I'd like to give a shout out to David Corson. I'd like to give a shout out to Mike Pellerino. Mm-hmm. Yep, <laughs> it's good crew. Good people. You know, yeah. just, you guys are all just good people to me. And um, I'd like to give a shout-out to my team here at JV. All right. Awesome. Well, you have a wonderful holiday season, and I look forward to catching up with you again soon at the Shop Talk 360 uh, interview or event. Same to you, Grace. Have a happy holiday. Merry Christmas. You too. Hey, Shop Talkers, welcome to another holiday speed round here with a very dear friend of mine, 
Jim Wexler, President with Experiences Unlimited. Hi, Jim. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, it's so great to chat with you. Thank you for participating on our holiday speed round. Uh, now, share with our audience, what project or projects are you glad to be wrapping up for this year? Well, uh, as you know, Grace, I'm a, a busy guy and doing lots of interesting things. So I'll mm-hmm. tell you about the the uh, three things that are uh, swamping our attention, which also sort of will help uh, remind you and define for your audience uh, what we're up to and what we do. So the first one is uh, we have uh, a business in which we make games for learning mm-hmm. and games for engagement. And we also, as you might remember, do a lot of assessment and psychometric measurement, meaning we do personality tests that glean data from users in order to learn about them. So Mm -hmm. the the most exciting project for this year that is actually doing quite well is our program called The Road Ahead. It's a game that you play that helps you understand who you are and gives you a list of jobs that fit your personality. Mm -hmm. I've talked to you about Road Ahead before, but... Uh, we the have. latest update is the people who are using it. So Road Ahead is live, and your viewers, by the way, could go to roadahead.co and check this whole thing out. But we've signed up some very interesting audiences. The, the primary mm-hmm. audience that I'll tell you about is one that involves uh, veterans returning from the war. And I have a client uh, in New Jersey called Job Pass. And Job Path is really a job board for returning veterans. They're dedicated to helping veterans become trained and seek get employment. And there's a bit of an issue with returning veterans. Uh, their employability rate is lower than the average populace, and they need all the help they can get. So mm-hmm. in, uh, what we're doing with the road ahead is, first of all, giving these veterans insight into uh, their capabilities and into uh, their strengths so that they know what kind of jobs they should be matched for. But the other thing we're doing for job path is measuring the character of the returning veterans. What job path mm-hmm. told us is that there's a vast misconception in the marketplace from employers who want to hire veterans but are a little gun-shy because they are afraid, un- unfoundedly, by the way, that veterans might have problems in returning from the war, that they might be predisposed to violence or have uh, predisposition to use drugs and other character problems. By mm-hmm. screening uh, job paths, vet applicants for character, we're able to uh, certify that the veterans that they are putting forward are uh, worthy of employment. It's a very, very, very small percentage of people who might uh, get separated or washed out because of these uh, character issues. So the road ahead mm-hmm. is being applied to helping uh, veterans find work, and uh, we're pretty excited about that this year. That sounds very exciting. Um, and, of course, we always want to support our veterans returning home, and what better way to do that than to help them move on and get employed. Um, so I applaud you and your efforts. That's wonderful. Um, sure. Now, what industry trends, maybe specifically in your industry, are you noticing for the upcoming year? Well, you know, uh, because of our involvement in the human capital and measurement and the placement of people into jobs that matter, uh, one of the trends mm-hmm. I'm uh, seeing that I think might be interested, interesting for your uh, listeners uh, uh, regards uh, the use of uh, new kinds of uh, testing in the field of compliance. You know how at retail, for example, uh, there's a big uh, problem with uh, shrinkage, where yeah. uh, sometimes it's customers, but oftentimes it's employees who will mm-hmm. uh, make off with goods, and it's a, it's a problem at, at retail. Mm-hmm. Uh, in other industries, they have other problems with compliance and ethical behavior amongst the employees. And we've crafted some assessments now that, deter- that are used in compliance that determine the predisposition of uh, the applicant or of the employee to engage in unethical behavior. Uh, the notion of, and it's so hard to find good help at retail, and there's so, so many people get hired into those jobs uh, uh, on a daily basis, but the, the idea that there can be a screen that will help you understand whether someone is predisposed to 
you know, stealing or uh, doing something wrong or behaving poorly uh, is hmm. very powerful. So the, 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 the trend that I'm seeing, which fits our business, that's why we're seeing it, is that more and more people are recognizing that data and data measurements can be applied in new ways to how they deal with customers and how they mm-hmm. deal with their own employees. Uh, mm-hmm. You remember the last time I saw you, we were having that conversation at one of your uh, uh, live uh, uh, panel sessions where there Absolutely. was a question about about um, uh, customer service and whether uh, data could replace the um, retail customer uh, service person at a high-end retail, whether it is possible to have uh, uh, data-driven um, terminals that provide the level of customer service that uh, consumers are used to at retail. And it, obviously the answer was you'll never quite replace uh, a top uh, client-facing um, associate uh, was the conclusion mm-hmm. we all drew there. But we were also talking about the data. The more that the, uh, the associate can call on about the past, past behavior and buying patterns and, and needs of that consumer, the better they'll be able to service them. Well, I think it's in that same vein. The, the notion of being able to harness and uh, make use of that consumer data, personality data, uh, will make it uh, easier for us to put the right people in front of our customers and provide services. So I'm just excited about the continued scale of the data trends and data usage in the marketplace. Wow. Yeah, that's very interesting. So it's um – to your point, to consumer data and, and also it, it's a, it's behaviors. It's, it's, it's really human resources, um, and their behaviors and where they fit. That's right. Okay. Absolutely. Very interesting. Okay. Well, I'm sure we'll have more discussion on that, uh, next year. Um, okay. Now, uh, on to you, Jim. What's the top item on your New Year's resolution list? Well, yeah, from a from a personal or a business perspective, my New Year's resolution. Mm-hmm. Sure. Mm-hmm. I would say, you know, if I had to think of one thing, it's to execute well. You know, there's so much that we want to do in my business, mm-hmm. so much we want, I want to do on behalf of customers, and there's no shortage of uh, great ideas. But to me, mm-hmm. it's uh, uh, bringing them to life, finding the right match for, between the customer and and the client and software. Uh, executing well is is uh, really, really high on my list. I've got to hire well this year. I've got to uh, uh, bring in designers who create interfaces that are uh, dazzling and appealing. There's so much Mm -hmm. competition for mind share and for uh, eyeballs in the marketplace. So, uh, you know, I don't know why I'm telling you that, but uh, I know that uh, my continued success is based on execution. We have great ideas. And we have great products, and um, having them uh, live in the marketplace is everything to me. So sure, I'm, I'm After trying. Minute. You know? mm-hmm. I, I think that's that's with most of us. Everyone's trying to do a lot more, um, whatever in whatever capacity, in whatever industry they're in. And also, being a business owner and entrepreneur myself, I can totally relate. Um, one of my New Year's resolutions is focus, because there's so many things I want to do. So. Uh, again, mine is just quick and simple focus. Okay, now here's a fun question. So true. If you could, if you could give a special gift to our industry for the holidays, what would it be, and why? Well, it's interesting. I think of uh, uh, brick and mortar retail mm-hmm. being. Uh, an incredibly exciting destination and a, a place where magic happens. And then I think about the crux of my business, which is uh, giving people uh, delightful experiences uh, digitally, doing it online, or giving them delightful experiences uh, so that they can learn more and so on. If I had mm-hmm. to uh, think of what I would wish for retail, it would be to be able to take a page out of that book and Use and think of the retail environment, uh, life and interface. There's plenty of that already with uh, shelf design and store design and layout, but even more so where whether it means uh, bringing data to the fore so that the experiences are more customized or whether it means uh, 
uh, taking a page out of the book of giving people a, an experience that is uh, iterative and that allows them to uh, master a series of challenges uh, in retail. But bring, bringing the kinds of things that get people excited when they're online to real life. That's That would mm. be my hope. Uh, I, I think that there's a, a lot to be learned there. And uh, there's a lot of room to grow in closing the gap between uh, online and digital uh, click experiences and the kinds you have at brick and mortar. Yes, absolutely. You know, and uh, you bring up some very, very um, interesting points. And I'm going to be uh, hold you. I'm going to hold you to this that next year we're going to explore more in depth of, with these type of. Uh, discussions. Very, very interesting. Um, sure. Okay, well, now th- that wraps up our speed round. Feel free to give a shout out for the holidays to someone special to you. All right, well, I'm going to give a shout out to you, Grace, and I hope you have a fantastic <laughs> holiday. Thank you. And uh, to you. all my uh, friends who listen to your show, uh, uh, give us a jingle and let's uh, let's talk and do business in 2017. All righty. Thank you, Jim. Always great chatting with you. Always learning uh, the cutting edge of what's going on in your industry and how it affects our industry. So very, very stoked. Thanks so much, Jim. Have a happy new year. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, great. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining Shop Talk 360, real conversations in the commercial design, construction, and facilities industry. You can reach out to us at grace at gracedaily.com.